honestly just did not know better at the time, which is probably why a lot of y'all watch these videos, just so you can know better and yeah. do better. <laughs> Welcome back to another video. I'm Alexia. We found Long Lost Fawn. It's been quite a minute <laughs> since she's been in a video. Y'all know the funny thing? We live together, obviously. But I haven't seen her since February. Today is March 16th. But yeah, we haven't seen each other while she missed me. Mm. Good you. Good you. Mm. <laughs> Anyways, y'all. I so, like hugs. He always touching me. So I just got back from a trip, like not even 30 minutes ago. And I've been getting tons of questions on just videos from whenever. So I decided to do what probably won't be a short Q&A. We're gonna do a Q&A today. Susan Keller, seems like you are catching up on a lot of my vlogs cause you've commented on quite a few recently. So I'm gonna just continue letting you catch up. <laughs> but thank you for, um, for mint we both got mint we've been flying since february it has changed our lives tremendously um and she couldn't be more grateful for me <laughs> it's so true sarah m commented just found your channel omd the struggle is real happy you finally found your way to work she's referring to two vlogs ago flight attendant commute struggle um thank you sarah for finding my channel I hope you subscribe and there'll be more great videos to come. So, 326 Musician says, Hi Alexia, found your channel and I'm very excited now. I know I will get picked to go to the FA training portion of the process, already claiming it. Well, kudos to you, sir. Go ahead and claim that. Or ma'am, I'm sorry, I can't see. But 326 Musician, claim it. Yes, you have to claim everything in advance. Um, if I'm currently employed, do you think I would be able to give a month's notice when I'm chosen for training. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Um, if you're currently employed, do you think I'll be able to give a month's notice? More than likely, yes, depending on what airline you apply for. If it's a regional, they kind of move a little bit quicker. It's usually like two weeks. Yeah, but if it's our airline, they gave us a month in advance for sure notice of when our training date process would start. So I would say yes, depending on the airline. Sometimes you can defer it too. Um, we talked about that in another video. Um, they give you the option if they offer you a training date and you're unable to accept it, you can defer it to a later to a later date. Push it out a little further, but seniority is everything, so I suggest not deferring it. Correct. Bella Bella asks, "What do I use on my brows?" <laughs> I use Anastas Anastasia Beverly Hills or whatever she's called. Um, I don't know what color. It's one of the dark browns and um, LA LA Girl Pro Concealer to highlight underneath. This is not a makeup tutorial. She has. Hate makeup tutorials. Fawn's naturally pretty, y'all. Y'all know the first thing I ever said to Fawn, she was on Facebook and she had a cute little picture and I said, OMG, you're so pretty. You did? Do you remember that? No. See? That was the first thing I said when we were in our... What did I say? You said thank you. No. Oh, she loved me ever since. <laughs> and I sent her a grocery list of food to bring me from Texas. <laughs> I didn't get it. I said I wanted boudin. She can fly to Texas. Fawn has been flying for 20 plus years. She I'm, can fly to Texas. I'm only want. 25. Sips tea. Sips a lot of tea. Shelly Belly, thank you for the idea of taking the picture of my room number. That'll stop me from getting lost again. I appreciate that. In the hotels? Yeah. I ain't figured that one out yet. Good luck. You said take a picture of the room number when you get there and then it's in your phone. I guess. If you I did, remember to take the phone exactly, out the room. Exactly, that's, that's the, the thing. It's thing. Like, if you remember, take the phone, not the Cause room. Cause sometimes like, if I just walk out of the room to like run downstairs to get something or I go to get ice from a liquor, I, I go I back down the hallway. My phone, I don't go anywhere without the phone. Well, what I do is I just take my key and I just go through every room if I can't find it. I was lost the other day at the uh, San Francisco Hotel. You've never been. She don't go to San Francisco. But the San Francisco Hotel is really big. I'm not going there. And I got lost. I couldn't remember what floor I was on. I knew the room number, but I couldn't remember the floor. 
So Shelly Belly, I will try to remember to do that. The thing is, is that once you finish the trip and then you do the long ride to the hotel or the short ride or whatever, the ride to the hotel, then you wait to get your keys and then you finally get up there. You just want to throw the bags on the ground and lay in the bed. So remembering to take the photo is going to be the hard part. But girl on my last trip told me her first year of flying, she kept a hotel room key from every hotel that she stayed in. No, the guy that I just finished flying with, 14, he's been flying 14 years. He says he keeps all his keys as a collector's item. No, not me. I mean, I don't see the point. <laughs> I don't get it either. 14 years of hotel room keys. What does that look like? Clutter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to butcher this name, and I do apologize. Um, Ilanid Centron says, and this is on my first flight attendant vlog. So he went all the way back, or she went. I'm so sad. I applied a few days ago, and the application was rejected. I would appreciate if you could tell me the basic requirements for the airline that's very near and dear to my heart for the in-flight crew member position. It would be helpful someday for me to achieve my goal of being a really good flight attendant and hopefully they could accept my application in the future. So if you're applying to the airline that I work for, I'm not sure how big of a span a few days ago is for you, but we're not currently hiring in flight. So I think the last time the application was open was mid-March mid or end of February. Oh, I really don't remember, but it's only open for a short period of time. Um, but I will answer the other portion of your question, um, the basic requirements. And this is pretty much the same for all airlines. So, Fawn, go ahead and answer because I can't remember. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, she must have a really good answer. For I, don't. I don't. know what um, she's about to But say. the basic requirements, um, age. So, I believe most airlines are either 20 or 21. But um, if the application got rejected, it's something that you did or something yeah. that you checked off. And sometimes, I think we've probably all done this where, I know you said something about marking, ha, she put down <laughs> for the question. So an application that I filled out for <laughs> Southwest years ago, like years ago, honestly, like 2012, I think it was, y'all, it had the question, are you, are you willing to relocate? And I had no checks, like a fool. That's one of the requirements. That <laughs> I looked at that and I was like, well, obviously I wasn't going to get that job. You know, I probably honestly just did not know better at the time, which is probably why a lot of y'all watch these videos just so you can know better and yeah. do better. So if you are applying for a flight attendant position, whether or not in your heart that you want to move, you know, you're going to commute, you know, you want to stay local. On that application, you do have to select that you were willing to relocate. Regardless of what the airline says, just say yes. It could have been a lot of things. Like with our airline, you have to have your passport ahead of time. So if True. they ask you that and you check no, that's an automatic no. And like it has to so also, things. yeah. So for the passport, and not all airlines require you to have your passport beforehand. But right. for the airline we work for, you do have to have it beforehand, before you even apply. Mm -hmm. And I believe it still needs to be within a, six months before mm -hmm. it expires. That could be a reason why the application was rejected. Um... But basic requirements, you do not have to be a college graduate. Uh, high school diploma is accepted throughout all airlines. That is the basic requirement as far as education um, to become a flight attendant. Does a degree help? I honestly really don't know. I mean, as far as the recruiters looking at it and saying, oh, this person has a degree, I don't think that really makes a big difference in putting you in the yes or the no pile, honestly. Yeah, because you it, can have a degree and like no customers, no customer service experience, and yeah. you could not have a degree and have like one airline I know of who wants you to have like a high end retail experience or waitressing or bartending. They'd rather see you have that than yeah. a degree. So it's all relative. So basic requirement right there, customer service is a huge basic requirement. Um, I'm not going to say you can't get into the industry without it, right. but honestly, you're probably lacking the skills to pass the interview if you don't have any customer experience, customer service experience. Like, you need to be able to talk with customers, laugh with customers, be serious with customers, blah, 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 all of that good stuff with customers 
in the face-to-face -face environment. Um, so yeah, I hope that kind of answers your question. Um, the next time the application opens up, I always post a video. Um, I always post it on Instagram also. That is alexianicole.life. I'm hearing rumors of 401. Yeah. So maybe April 1st, application might open. Maybe not. Who knows? Stacy Duke says, great content. Thanks for keeping the blog so interesting. I've been flying a long time, but I'm always interested in your adventures, especially since I don't have the courage to vlog about mine. Aww. Thank you, Stacy, for watching. It always, it really uh, makes me feel good when other flight attendants watch my vlogs. Um, not that everybody else doesn't matter, because obviously, y'all do. But it's just really cool to know that other flight attendants still find it interesting to watch other flight attendants, especially when they already know what the job is. I mean, I watch other flight attendants too, and it's you always catch something different. So thank you, Stacey. Aaron Gibbs says, I thought airlines give you money for food when away from base. I already replied to your comment, but I'm going to answer this just in case anybody else is wondering. And from my experience, which is only with my airline, this one airline, first airline ever, no. <laughs> okay um they do not give us money for food when we're away from base there are certain circumstances if we have a you know a sit period of so long or delayed for so long or but she's not talking about like per diem right she's just talking about like well i don't money? i'm not really sure erin so we can we can spend it a few ways so do we get lunch <laughs> money crew meal like I don't, okay. I don't know it's there's the straight up answer is no yeah the straight up answer is no so but there are situations um at other airlines that if you work over i believe what is the faa rate they just changed it to crew rest i'm sure crew rest and crew meal probably. 10 hours is it 10 hours 10 hours yeah 10 hours so some rest. airlines depending on if you work a certain length of time if your flight duty time is over not even duty time just probably flight time if it's at a certain amount of hours fawn says 10 hours then you're provided um, oh rest i mean 10 hours for the rest that for, was a oh, new for, faa rule for rest oh, but for food, rest. food i found is always like airline specific that's like true. that's just like one airline i flew for um, they didn't give us crew meals, but we could go into the terminal and they had a partnership with a restaurant and you could go in there and show your badge and you could order off the menu and the company would pay for it. Yeah. So there's that at the airline that's near and dear to my heart. They don't feed us. We feed ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like I was saying, unless it's certain circumstances that have extended our days to more than what we planned for. So basically... Even if you're on reserve, you should still be prepared to feed yourself or at least work a 12-hour duty day. So you should provide your own food. Colleen, I'm messing up your last name probably, but she asks, why oh why do flight attendants like double beds? I prefer a double bed. That's a good question. You like double beds too? Yes. But my reason is far different than anybody's. Go What's on. your reason? <laughs> because... I have a really bad habit of drinking coffee in the bed. Oh yeah, she's a mess. And the coffee always falls over in the bed. And so I usually mess up one bed, so I have to take everything off the other bed and put it on the messy bed, and then I get in the other bed. The end. Okay, so that's Fawn's reason for liking double beds. I've watched some FA videos, and I think I've seen one person that likes just the big king bed or whatever but. the guy I flew it on my last trip he liked it that's because he was like He's, six five most most guys like the big beds but for the women i think because we have so much stuff yeah and i know for me i like to put it on the bed because mm -hmm. it's an easier reach instead of me having to bend down or lift up anything i literally just go in the room throw everything on the bed and then i have the other bed that's nice and neat for me to sleep in and then the other bed is just my my stuff holder that's the reason that I like the double beds. Um, yeah, that's really it. I like the double beds too because um, if I'm bringing somebody with me, it's good too. Oh yeah, so on layovers, you know, um, there's no restrictions 
on us pretty much at all on what we do on our labor, who visits us on our layover, who we bring on our layover. Where you go. <laughs> there should be. <laughs> <laughs> but there isn't. What? I should have like an ankle monitor. I can't go within five miles of the hotel. <sighs> Anyways. If, you know, Fawn brings her daughter on a layover, she goes to L.A., her daughter lives in L.A., and, you know, she wants to spend the night, then she already has the extra bed. Boom. And it's free. We don't pay for hotels. Everybody always asks me I that. I know. I think that's so funny. And I also they, think that we share rooms. I get that a lot, too. Yeah. I feel like, no. But some airlines do. <laughs> Lufthansa. They're not an American carrier, though. They don't count. But. I can't imagine that. Layovers. We, every flight attendant, every pilot... All crew members get their own room. So the flights that we fly now are six crew, two pilots, four flight attendants, six rooms. End of story. We ain't sharing. Now whether you choose to share your room. Yeah. Now, now that's another story. Now if your buddy been with your buddy, or your husband and your wife, or your, your fiance, bed buddy. which... <laughs> Which you meet a lot of people that, that buddy bid with their significant other because a lot of people for some some reason decide to date the employee. I don't know why. Let's talk about that another time. I'm not about that life. I got a lot of comments on the flight attendant commuting struggle video. And honestly, y'all, that is not a normal struggle for me. I'm really blessed with my um, commute. It's, it's usually very easy. Just but, not in a nor'easter, which I told her two days before the storm came. And what was she doing? In Napa, like the... I wasn't in Napa then. I was still at home. I was back at home. No, he was at the airport. And I was like, bring your ass back to JFK. They got positive space commuting. You were like, no, all my clothes are in Houston. Wait, 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 wait. I gotta go to the cleaners. Wait, 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 wait. Oh. Well, anyways, whatever. Um... <laughs> So there was a nor'easter, which another one's coming. FYI, I heard um, nor'easter meaning a, a a winter storm up here on the east coast. I don't know why they call them. I don't even know what a nor'easter stands for, mm. but it was a nor'easter. It was a winter storm. So that happened two days prior to me trying to commute in. So JFK was shut down for about a day. I'm not really sure if LaGuardia was. It probably was because they're only like 15, 20 minutes apart. Um, and then the day that I was trying to commute in, it was spring break starting. It was a Friday. So, and I'm, I, I didn't know. I didn't remember. I haven't had a spring break in eight years. That's also part of his job. Like you don't know holidays, breaks, weekends. I just realized that Easter is coming up and I love the Lord and I should have known this and I didn't remember. Um, so yeah, so basically spring break was happening. So everybody was going everywhere. And, and Houston is a big international airport for a lot of vacation places. If you're going to the, you know, the Caribbean, Mexico, all those places, big connecting flights, all of that. So it was just booked to capacity. But I made it to work. I worked my trip. I made it literally with like an hour to spare, y'all. I was playing with my life. Playing with my livelihood, trying to lose my job, but I made it. Keller asked, hi, I love your channel. Got my CJO a couple weeks ago. Congratulations. Congratulations. Waiting, on a uh, waiting on a training date. Question, did everyone want New York for a banks? She's going way back to one of my um, training vlogs, the base assignments are in. And no, everybody did not want New York for their base. So we had quite a few people in my class that um, are from Boston and for whatever reasons, the needs of the airline at that time while we were in training was for New York. So every single last one of us, 70 of us, at the time it was 75. I don't think anybody had got kicked out of training yet or failed out. But we started with 75. They assigned all 75 of us to New York. We graduated with 70 and all 70 of us went to New York. Now at this point in time, I think pretty much everybody has transferred to what cities they want to be in. Um, so those Boston people, once they were able to put in a transfer, they um, they immediately did it. And I'm pretty sure all of them are in Boston by now. But they were here for about a month or two. Um, and they had to suck it up and do it and just, just go with it. That's, 
That's what you sign up for when you apply for an airline. Now, some airlines do hire you um, based on the needs of certain bases that they have. So they'll let you know at the interview time that we are hiring for this base right now. So that could be good for you. Um, our airline doesn't do that. They let you know once you get into training. Can you bid for other bases? Yeah, you can. We have five bases. JFK, Boston, Orlando, <laughs> Fort Lauderdale, and Long Beach. Their name is JetBlue595. They just posted a comment and said they just got their CJO. Congratulations. I'm so happy you made these blogs throughout training. It really helps me to see what it'll be like and what to know to expect. So I know a lot of y'all are new to my channel. Thank you. Welcome. Make sure you click the subscribe button. Um, if y'all don't know, I have a playlist on my channel that literally starts from the morning I left Houston, Texas to the day that I graduated training from my airline that's near and dear to my heart. And I go into pretty intense details of everything that's going on through training. So if y'all were loving the black wig in the wine and wigs video. Oh, hell no. I didn't like that. <laughs> She's crazy. Um, thank you for the compliments. I appreciate it. Um, I am a very versatile girl. But short and natural is what's true to my heart, so I will be sticking with that. Thank you. Angelique Diva 1988. Great video. Just got my CJO from Piedmont, who is also wholly owned by American. I'm so excited. Go Think ahead, Philly girl. base. Go to Philly as your base. Why should she go to Philly? I don't know. I think it's going to be a junior base. It's going to be a junior base. You'll probably hold a line quicker there. Fonz. That's, that's what Fonz is. I don't know nothing about a Piedmont. But congratulations. Nisha A says, I just found this channel and I'm hooked. New subscriber, thumbs up. Yay. Thank you, girl. I always wanted to be a flight attendant. I got an offer with Republic to go to training, but I chickened out at the last minute. I will be so disappointed with myself if I got dismissed from the class early. Now, Nisha. I'm just going to say this. <clears throat> so, Republic is like one of the hardest training classes. And, I mean, if, if you felt that way, then it's probably good that you didn't go. Because if you talk yourself out of it, because if you talk yourself out of it, you've basically written your ticket home. That, that is true. That, so, that's I mean, if true. you're not ready, you're not ready. True. True, true, and, right. and true. But I always say, you don't let no opportunities pass you up. And you, for me, I mean, I don't know what's going on in your life and right. what other things you know, what else you have. I don't know. But if this is really something that you want, and there's so yeah. many people that want these opportunities, y'all, you have to have the confidence in yourself to know that you're going to pass these classes. And it's doable. Obviously, there's, there's hundreds of thousands, millions of flight attendants in the world. You can pass these trainings. It's not impossible. You just have to dedicate a month of your life to this training without any other distractions. That's what I had to tell myself because I don't like school. I don't like studying. I didn't, I didn't like any of it. But I put all those feelings aside and did what I had to do. So, Nisha, good luck to you in the future. Cara Blue says, your dogs are so cute. Aspen! And Denver. You never talk about Denver. Maybe I have a favorite. I do. Well, Aspen is my dog, and Denver is technically my mother's dog. But I still love them both okay. very dearly. Denver, too. <laughs> but thank you so much. My babies are my life, and I miss them. So now I'm going to do a few questions that I've got on Instagram here lately. I won't name names because they might want things to be private. I'll name it JK. So hey Alexia, I've been watching your videos for the last few days and I've been lucky enough to have two airlines express interest in me. I've just completed the video interview and a phone interview for the other and have gotten a face-to-face -face interview for a regional airline. Haven't heard anything back from Mainline yet though. My concern is that I will get started at a regional for their training but then the Mainline will contact me too to do their training. I know it's suggested to apply for multiple airlines and not put all your eggs in one basket, but now I'm worried that during that if I get accepted to regional training and the mainline calls and I leave to go there, it'll make me look bad. 
has this happened to you or anyone you know and what do you think will be the best way to handle this situation thanks for all your helpful videos so he's definitely not the first person in this predicament I've never personally been in the predicament well I was almost kind of sort of in the predicament I've heard of it happen to other people I've read about it on the flight attendant career connection page if you're not on that page on Facebook please join it you can literally find the answer to every question you could possibly think of on that page it's a it's a Facebook page for all airlines international and US based anything you want to know search it in the search bar you can find it um, but to answer the question I personally don't think it will make you look bad if you leave one airline training to go to another um, the same way that they will let you go if you failed is the same way you should feel about jumping ship to another airline that you think is better for you they don't care you shouldn't care either this is true you, the thing that you have to remember is that these airlines get so many applications and yes they picked you you might have connected with your recruiter and so on and so on but please believe me that if you had to leave whether it was on your terms or their terms their feelings would not be hurt so your feelings shouldn't be hurt either or you shouldn't be worried about their feelings is really how I say that yeah so best of luck if you're applying to multiple airlines and you get multiple offers just do what your heart is telling you to do and then maybe hopefully you can time it out right I mean maybe if it's a regional and you go to their training and you still get you know an offer accepted for a mainline their training probably won't start until a few months later so go work at the regional until it's time to go to the other airlines training like I know that may sound bad, but it'll help you get experience. Shoot, it might be years. If yeah, if it's Southwest, it could be a year. I mean, if you want to wait that long, more power to you. But yeah, I say take the first opportunity, and if something else comes up, then because you know what you know what Medine said in the video that we did about regional versus mainline. Mm -hmm. He also said it's not a bad idea to go work for a regional and see if this is this career is even a good fit for you. Mm -hmm. yeah I that's true so go for it go for it the question is hello thanks for answering well you know that I applied for a flight attendant position and I received an email from Delta Airlines notifying me that I have an interview through higher view and I'm a little nervous um, they told me that there are gonna be six questions could you help me in the process how much time do I have for the interview um, from the date that I received the email so I haven't done a Delta process in a long time. So the best thing to do when you want to know what to expect for the video interviews and even for a face-to-face -face interview for a specific airline, go to glassdoor.com, mm -hmm. search that airline, search the interview that you're going to be doing. So if, for example, this gentleman has a video interview with Delta, go online to www.glassdoor.com, go to their interview section, type in Delta flight attendant video interview or whatever and Tons of reviews will pop up with their experiences and their stories and some people even have the questions listed mm -hmm. So that's the best way to kind of prepare yourself. That's what I did for my interviews that same website Just a lot of people that's gonna be the end of this video um, I should have a crash pad tour video coming up for you all very soon. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you go ahead and give this video a thumbs up.